All right, so we've decided whether or not we're ready to be an entrepreneur. So I, I told all of you in the last segment to come up with your idea and think of something no one's ever thought before. So I'm sure everybody's got their million dollar idea here today. But with that, let's talk about things that we need to consider before we start our business and what needs to, what, what we're gonna put into our business. And really, we figured out we are an entrepreneur, uh, but what really is gonna motivate us and, and, and invest us in this? So things to consider. We want to consider, consider our skill set, right? What are we good at? What can we do? My undergraduate was accounting. I've spent many, many years uh, in the accounting field, so right off the bat, my skill is accounting. Uh, hobbies, what do we like to do? What do we like to do for fun that we would kill if we could get paid for it? We're seeing a whole slew of careers of that happening on Instagram. People just taking pictures of them using... Um, different products getting sponsored from there, YouTube channels from there. There are other people that really are passionate about technology. They wanna go out and create an app. They wanna find a way to make things better, or make more things more accessible. What's our education? What do we know? What do we not know? So, as we talked about with ClearCollar in, in the case prior, as we talked with in the ClearCollar case, I have a background in accounting and business. I know nothing about healthcare. So in that, I, my education is on the business side, but I have no idea how to tackle an idea as far as saving a lives or creating a standard of care. Where, where are my skills gonna benefit that type of business? What are my work experience? What industries have I been involved? Whether you're an engineer, an accountant, if you're an actor, what industries have you been involved in? And even something as simple as acting, there's different levels of, uh, industry that you can be associated with and where do you want to specialize where does your business want to be your family we talked about family support what what resources do you have from your family what kind of toll will it take on them what are they willing to participate what is their buy-in to the company and again resources do we have money do we need money how do we get the resources to do it and sometimes this is the part of the the, the business that people struggle with. It's the hardest, how easy is it to find money? We just look under our mattresses, we find the money tree, we, we shake it, we get it. It doesn't happen that easy. And on the same side, I see the flip of that where people get money too easy and haven't considered any of these other things. And their lives fall apart because they have the resources to start the company and no other support. So in doing this, you have your resources, you have your family, we're gonna do, what I prefer is a personal SWOT. A SWOT analysis is your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Now in this, SWOT is a very, very popular term for strategy. It used to be the go-to piece for business strategy. It was taught in classes. My mentor, Chuck Bamford, which his book is assigned for module five, as far as strategy, will tell you SWOT is not strategy. And I, I actually prescribe to this, to this theory. It is really a great way to map out what do I have, what am I good at, what do I need, and what really could make things go bad. What did the uh, engineer who made the trash can uh, not have to lose? Very, very little, right? What does the, uh, the pastor who is starting a non-for-profit for brewery have to lose? We've talked about one of the things they're having is they have to raise money. They're looking for outside donors to help get this started and people that believe in the mission. And the question is, and we'll talk about strategy and mission, are they buying into the mission of helping people? Are they buying into the mission of a brewery? Or how do you meld both of those into a strategy that's uh, attractive to the, the potential stakeholder? and then Boxman Studios. In the latest interview you've watched with Boxman Studios, you have a former real estate development uh, executive who left his company and said, you know what, I wanna get my hands dirty. He got one container that was used for trains to, de to deliver goods that was run down, beat down. It was donated to him, and him and a buddy went in there with a bunch of tools and turned it into an office. And they now have a very, very successful business, as, as you've seen in the interview, where they go around to some of the top names, Facebook, 
cliff bars, monster energy, and they turn old shipping and freight containers into state-of-the-art offices. What our entrepreneur-to-be can assess to start their business idea. They are an accountant. They are skilled at cooking and they are skilled at running. They have won numerous 5Ks, half marathons, and marathons. Their hobbies, they're a foodie. They gotta eat all that food just to burn the calories from all their running. They're into baking and yoga. Education, they've got a bachelor's degree. Obviously a bachelor's degree in accounting. Work experience, they've worked as a financial analyst at the bank for the past 12 years. Their family, spouse, their spouse is a web developer and they have two kids. Why is that important? Family. family. You, you got sacrifice. Obligations. What? Complications. Yeah, complications. What else? No, obligations. Oh, obligations. Family. Oh, I, well. We all have family complications, so I'm right on board with you there, but obligations as well. Um, I actually look at it as a resource. If you have a web developer, that's exactly it. Then you, you or she could help to develop your website for your business. Well, not only that, that's actually even that's goes even above and beyond where I'm going. Because if you have a web developer, you're going to have to have a website. Yeah. Well, not only that, that's actually even that goes above and beyond where I'm going at. But here's the thing when you have a two income household and one of you loses your job, the, it's a lot easier. You have less to lose. You, you have, have less to lose. Time. You at least have a baseline. And sometimes we forget that because there are a lot of entrepreneurs that are single income families and that risk is much higher to do so. So you could even speak to that on, to the level of when I make that leap, it's all or nothing. I've got to believe that assessment we did in the last module you've done in your head every day on your way to work. And resources, $35,000 in savings. What could we do with $35,000? We, we could invest it. No, I mean, we can invest it. We can invest it in the stock market. We could invest it in ourselves and our idea. And what will $35,000 get us, right? There are times $35,000 seems like it would answer a lot of problems we have. And there are times it seems like it would not even make a dent in the, the things we want to be involved with. So as we do this personal assessment and our entrepreneur comes to the table, they say, hey, you know what? I'm going to start a donut company. And today, we are going to start Nana's uh, Donuts. So over the next several modules, we'll start, be, we'll start building upon the, the lessons we've learned and even using some of the interviews in the past. So I mentioned to you before we had an emergency room nurse that had a great idea for a new cervical collar and created the clear collar. He went through this exact same assessment. What are his skills? He was an excellent nurse. His hobbies? His hobbies were everything from hunting to... Uh, uh, he loved to cook. His education, he had a high school education and he had an associate's degree in nursing. Work experience, worked in the emergency room as a nurse for over 15 years. Family, had a, had a spouse that was working, had two children still living at home, two children that were off at college, and resources. That was the issue at the time. He had a little bit of money, but not enough to go out and start a whole company. So how can I, so right now I've got a great idea, my, my donut company I just thought of for our entrepreneur. Can I get any of you guys to chip in money for that right now? No, you don't know what you're buying into, you don't know what it takes to do that. And if you all happen to just give me, if you each gave me a million dollars, as of right now, I don't know what I'd do with it, right? That might be a bigger recipe for disaster. So as we do that, we're going to talk about, we've, we've come up with our idea, we've done our gut check on whether we're ready to do this. Now let's start coming up with a plan on what this is all about. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash or visit casmerward.com to catch up on previous episodes.